Information is power. Information is power. Okay, everybody. Welcome, everybody, to the Information Man show slash Information Man podcast. I'm broadcasting on my first channel, which is the Information Man show channel. I have uh, um, a lot more people follow me on that particular broadcast, but I'm broadcasting on all the other platforms. As you know, um, I'm broadcasting on a, a variety of different platforms. And uh, here they go. You are. Here we go. Let me first say subscribe to the channel. You are listening to Information Man. Please make sure to subscribe to his channel. And yeah, thank you. I would definitely appreciate everybody uh, if they could do that. Got a little bit of uh, <clears throat> my voice is a little scratchy, so you have to excuse me in this broadcast and everyone listening out there. I want to thank you for supporting the show. Make sure you check out my second channel. Information Man Speaks podcast on the other channel. There will be a link in the description of this video where you can click into the link and it will bring you straight to that channel uh, where I'll do most of my podcast radio style like this over there. But these are the platforms that you can hear me on as well. If you have a Droid phone, uh, iPhone, any of these types of apps on your phone or tablets or computer. The Information Man podcast can be heard on nine major platforms on the second YouTube channel as well, Information Man Speaks Podcast, Spotify, Anchor, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Podbean, CastBox, SoundCloud, and finally, Spreaker. Okay, there you have it. Those are the platforms that you can hear the podcast on. I want to thank everybody for being here. Uh, let me get into it right away. Uh, as you can see on the description of the video, um, this is about reparations. I recently was on O'Shea Duke Jackson Sunday Rumble. I want to say a shout out to Brother O'Shea Duke Jackson. He's been nothing but gracious towards a brother here. Uh, and I want to thank everyone out there who has uh, been supporting my channel, whether you're in the chat room or just listening afar, wherever you are in the world. I definitely appreciate that, too. Uh, once again, just excuse my voice. It's a little scratchy, but I'm OK. I'm not sick or you know ill or anything, but uh, just bear with me and trying to get through this material. Uh, basically, this will be a summary of material that I've gone over before in the past. I did a video that was a pretty long video on my first channel, breaking down what a reparations plan would look like from, an, from a cash payment and the relevance of how um, it, it's, it is relevant and the United States can pay it. This time what I want to do is I want to consolidate what I did in that video and get right to the point, get to the numbers so that it makes sense to everybody out there that'll be listening to this video now what I want to do is say this that uh, when I was on the rumble you know things get heated you argue back and forth with people that's the nature of things but you don't take anything personal um, I have nothing personal you know I was on there debating and uh, expressing myself 
um, and shout out to Brother Gab Talk Media. He's uh, if he's out there listening, Brother George Makeham. Those are some of the brothers that were on the panel that were sort of pro, that were pro uh, reparations checks. Uh, and there were those that were not for it. But this is the thing: um, <clears throat> one, we we have to when we make this argument or we get into a discussion of reparations, we really need to stay on. We need to really focus on the numbers, the statistics, and the historical context of what it means when we talk about reparations. Uh, a lot of times we get into our own personal feelings and thoughts about it. I do too. Uh, we try to make our opinions facts. When our opinions are not always based in facts, we're entitled to our opinions, but not always our own facts. Um, I don't, and sometimes as a people, we don't understand our history. And if we understood the history of what our people went through comprehensively, it would be a no brainer that we deserve reparation. Not only deserve it, but it is due, it is due us. Um, no doubt about it. It, 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 it. We have the right to it. Uh, America has spent a lot of money on other countries, um, supporting them in what they call foreign aid. Okay. Or military aid in the, in the tons of billions and trillions of dollars. Um, what I'm going to lay out here is from an article. There's a brother named Marcus H. Johnson who came out of an, well, an article. He has a blog a blog of his own. I'll put the description of this blog or the link to the blog in the description of this video so that you can read further about the brother's plan for reparations because he has this thing called the military plan, the cash payment plan. He does talk about the institutionalized plan where you put money into education, um, black pe I, I personally think that black people should be exempt from all taxes, federal income tax and state income tax, and that we should not have to be concerned with a portional amount of money coming out of our checks. We should get all of it. Health care, definitely we should get free of charge and um, no military service. And that, now that's my that's my thought when it comes to institutionalized racism, institutionalized um, reparations, excuse me. But I believe that, no, I don't believe, it's not a belief, it is a fact that the United States could pay um, a, a, a lump, not a lump sum, but a what we would call a, a annual, what I would call an annual um, payment to African American people in this country, and they can do it. And I've got the information right here. I'm going to present this to you all uh, as comprehensively as I can. I want to once again thank everybody who's listening to the program, who's out there. Information is power. Because information is power. And what I'm going to do is try to speak the truth. Tell the truth. As best as I can. Um, this is podcast style, the way I'm presenting this. And uh, I want everyone to listen up very first. First of all, I got to say this. A lot of times you have black people who say that if you give black people a check, they're going to spend all the money and all that kind of stuff. Look, across the board, America is a consuming country. We consume more than we produce. Black people are not the only ones who spend money and manage their money inappropriately. Okay, there are black people who manage money appropriately, and there are those who don't, like in other in any any other group. And because black people historically have never had generational wealth, we've always had to do things to hustle to make money. Black people have a long history of hustling. I mean, I remember being in the barber shop. You had brothers coming in selling you socks, selling you deodorant, selling you suits, slacks, whatever, draws, whatever. Black people have always hustled. You got young men who go into music who started off, I believe Master P started off selling his music in the back of the trunk of his car. So black people have always figured out ways to make some money even when we've been poor. If it's even selling lemonade outside. We've, we've done that, okay? And of course, you've got criminal element in all race of people. And it's a proven fact when you don't have wealth, you don't have a job in economics, it does lead to going to prison and being in the prison industrial complex system. I'm going to touch on that as it relates to reparations as well. So let's just keep that in mind. We got to stop trying to make these, or what I would call Negro Domus, <laughs> okay? Uh, these... Uh, predictions of what we think black people are going to do if they get a check. The bottom line is none of you know. 
you're only basing it off of your own cultural conditioning because in America, we are culturally conditioned to see white as superior and black as inferior. And as a manifestation of that cultural conditioning, we will marginalize, underestimate, and undervalue black people. Black people do it to each other. And then the, the uh, white society does it to us. And when we reinforce that, because in some deep seated level, we don't like each other. Therefore, underneath that layer, that psychological layer, we don't want to see each other come up with any money. And so we're quick to think of that. We quick to think of the negative of black people. If we were to get money, we always focus on the negative and not the positive of what this money could actually do. If you were to give black people annually a hundred thousand dollars, whatever, I'm going to break this down. It could solve a lot of our problems in terms of education where we would have money to get in the best the go to best schools we want to go to or create our own schools. Health care is one of our problems. Hell, having that money would help you deal with your health problems. OK, uh, in terms of housing, black people have had issues with housing. The money would allow you to improve your housing situation. Black people have been redlined when it comes to getting um, access to capital to buy a home or property. This would give you that ability. Now, of course, you're going to have knuckleheads that will misappropriate and spend money. Guess what? All Americans misappropriate and spend money. Everybody out here that's talking about Donald Trump is a great businessman. Guess what? Even Donald Trump has had, what, 30 or more bankruptcies, which is why he runs around trying to tout the to get foreign money. So the guy that you got in office for you black folks that are Trump supporters, this guy Trump has done, has built businesses and they have failed. So once again, we look, we look, we look at the white man's ice is colder than the black man's ice. When the white man and other groups of people have failed in business and have spent their money uh, poorly as well. But the difference between us and some of these groups is that they have generational wealth to blow their money. I think Mark Zuckerberg, he was able to start Facebook up because he got generational wealth from, I believe, a uncle or great grandfather or father. So that was seed money for him to do what he did with what we call Facebook today. Black people have not had that generational wealth. If you were put in slavery and oppressed then you can't you can't benefit the future generations. If I don't do what I do, what I'm supposed to do economically, it's going to affect my daughter or any of my family members. So let me get into this right now because I just had to say those things. Information is power. OK, <clears throat> once again, like I said, my throat is a little rusty right now, but I want you to bear with me. In this broadcast, and I thank you all for listening. Once again, this is you're listening to the Information Man Show slash Information Man podcast. I'm mixing it together on this bigger channel. Um, this is based on the article, so I'll be citing things from the article that I that I've highlighted. This is about the cash payment and financial as asset plan. Okay, that's what this brother's talking about. Now, he estimated that there's about there's about 42 million African Americans. In the United States today, that's a rough, that's an estimate, estimate, right? Uh, if you were to give 120, 125,000, what caught, and if you were to give 125,000 to all black people in America, that would roughly cost the United States 5.25 trillion, okay? Which isn't even close to what they spend in foreign aid in some places of the world. Now, the brother admits that a lump sum payment is not desirable so that so reparations, a reparations plan needs to be generational in order to be successful. And I agree with that. In order for you to be successful, it's got to be generational. OK, thus it would last about we're, going, we're talking about 50 to 100 years. So if you give black folks one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars annually from 50 to a hundred years, that would be one of the that would be the plan. Now, if we say that we're going to pay forty two million African Americans five point twenty five trillion over fifty years, then the cost of reparations is a hundred and five billion a year. 
for comparison, the United States government, and I said this on O'Shea's channel, the United States government spends $604 billion on national defense. That was just the latest number in the year 2016. So we got a 15% total spending. Okay? Now, a net interest on government debit payments were about $240 billion. So the government had a net payment. Well, let me see this right here. The government, the government had a, let me see, the government debt payment were about $240 billion. However, $5.25 trillion figure is unlikely to be accurate for several reasons. Now, the brother goes into several reasons why, because he's going to talk about the future going into 2060, 2050. He says, um, the first is that the plan is focused on the household level, not the individual level. The second is that the number of African Americans is going to increase over time. Federal government expects that the United States population to reach about 417, 417 million by 2060. If we believe that African Americans will remain at 14%, we're 13% of the population, so we're talking about between 13 and 14%, remain at this point of the population, that means that we will be at 58 to 60 million African Americans living in the United States, okay, in the next 40 to 50 years. That's an increase of almost 50% from current population numbers, everybody. Current population numbers. The federal government estimates that there are 2.63 people per household in the United States. Dividing 42 million by that number gives us, here's the estimate, everybody, 15.9 million households. And dividing 60 million by that number gives us 22.8 million households. Considering that birth and death rates are not stagnant, neither is the number of people living in each individual household in the United States. It is difficult to calculate how many total households will actually participate in the program over a 50-year period. This is talking about cash payments. The account for the death, accounting for the death over the span of the program estimates that the total number of individuals involved would be at 20% more than the number of participants about half a century from now. Half a century from now. For convenience, the brother goes into saying that he's going to use the 2016 estimates. So we're going with the 2016 estimates of 417 million United States citizens and about 60 million African Americans. Adding 20% to that number would give, let me go right here, would give us a total of, I'm putting it on the screen so you can see it in big letters right now. Look at that. 72 million, 72,000 million. So we got a large a number. We're talking about 72 million uh, black people, African-American males, African-Americans, not males, but African-American people who would have participated in reparations over 50 years, over a 50 year period. And assuming the number of people per household remains constant that would give us around 27 million households. Given that 27 million households would get 125,000 each would cost the United States government 
Are you ready for this number? Are you ready for this number? Tell the truth. It would cost the United States government $3.375 trillion over 50 years. That would arrange, that would average out to a cost of $67.5 billion. $67.5 billion annually. $67.5 billion annually. For comparison, the United States government, are you ready for this? The United States government spent $40 billion, $40 billion on foreign aid in 2016. $40 billion, $49 billion, let me correct that. $49 billion on foreign aid in 2016. And I already stated it to you that the United States government spends $640 billion on national defense. $604 billion on national defense and $49 billion on foreign aid. So that means they're giving our tax dollars, black people or taxpayers, to foreigners, people in other countries who do not pay taxes like we do. They're given money that they could be given to the, to the African-American descendants of slaves, ADOS, okay, if you want to hear me correctly. That in itself shows you the hypocrisy of this country and what is going on. Information is power. So when we start talking about numbers and getting on panels and talking about what black folks, what the government ain't going to do or what the government can't do, this notion that it would bankrupt the government is not true. That is not true. You must tell the truth. Tell the truth. You must not tell lies. I'm giving you the numbers here. See, sometimes we don't want to listen to numbers. We want, to get in con we want to get all caught up in our emotions and make a judgment about what black people ain't, shouldn't get, or what we're going to do with money, uh, what the country can't do. They've done it. I'm giving you more data that we come in your way. I got more data for you. Okay? Put this over here. Now, once again, the question is, the question is how to pay the reparations pro, how, how to pay the checks, how to pay, how this is going to work. I'm going to summarize this again. The rough estimate would be, this is a rough estimate. If you were to give $125,000 annually to black people for the next 50 to 100 years, that would, that would work out to 27 million black households, giving us as black people a total of $3.375 trillion over 50 years. That is $67.5 billion annually. The federal government spends about $4 trillion. In 2017, the federal government spent about $4 trillion, I think, just in overall expenditures. The federal government, they spend this kind of money. All right, that was in 2017. That would mean that this, that the reparations plan would be only 1.6% of the federal budget. So if the, so if the federal budget was around $4 trillion in 2017, and the reparation plan would only be at 1.6% of the federal budget of this country, a percentage that could actually decrease over time because you got to take into account that you're going to have black people that are going to die. They're going to pass away. You're going to have accidents. You're going to have health issues. These, you know, these things are going to happen. Okay. Now let's get to the prison industrial complex system. We're going to get into that next. Um, let me take a quick little break and I'll be right back with you all.
Now let's get back to the Information Man podcast. All right, thank you. I'm back. Took a little. I had to get a couple, a little sip of water. My voice is a little raspy, but I hope everybody bear with me uh, in this present. And what I'm talking about, this is very important. Now we talk about the industrial prison complex system. I know for a fact because of my experience in it and, 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 and dealing with guys in the prison system that it costs about thirty to forty to sixty thousand dollars a year just to house guys in the prison industrial complex system. And if you think about it, you could send every child in this country to college for free based on what they spend to incarcerate one man in a damn cell. Okay. So the, the, the opponents of reparations plan also might say that roughly in, in mind is that the United States already spends billions of dollars effectively oppressing black people. Okay, thinking about how much it would cost to incarcerate someone for one year. By the same estimate, it is between thirty thousand dollars to sixty thousand, which is a range of two point three million people are locked up in the United States of these Americas. Okay, with black people making up about forty percent of the prison population of inmates. That means about. 920,000 black people. You hear me? 920,000 black people are in prison each year. Now, just resonate on that. Think about what I'm saying to you. Let it sink in. 920,000 black people in prison each year. Let it sink into your mind. If each inmate costs the government or state or federal government 45000 a year, that means that $41.4 billion is being spent. $41.4 billion, $41.4 billion is being spent to lock black people, to lock black people up each year. Any successful reparation program or plan would positively change the social economic status of black people. As a group, less poverty is correlated with fewer arrests and being incarcerated in prison and being engaged in the prison industrial complex system. If you got money, you can get the best lawyers. If you got money, you don't have to get into crime, stealing, robbing. You have prosperity. If reparations could cut the amount of black prisoners in half, that would also represent a savings to the United States of America. A 41.4 billion number, meaning that's what they're spending, 41 0.4 billion they're spending to incarcerate particularly us black people but they would save with a reparation plan that helps gives us some economic boom and we know that when you don't have jobs and you don't have economic prosperity it correlates to what in poor education it correlates to being a part of the imprisoned industrial complex system but if you increase the economic boom in the black community with this reparations for example it could save the United States of America. 20.7 billion would be saved annually in the United States. Hell, they could take that money and give it to us. That is already nearly one third of the annual cost of this reparations plan. And that plan is $125,000 annually to black people between for 50 to 100 years under the planet this brother Marcus H. Johnson is talking about. And I'll put, it, I'll put the link to his article in the description of this video. I will. No doubt about it. Tell the truth. Now, those of you who say, well, America ain't got no money. That's a lie because I'm going to break it down here. Military aid. The United States in Israel have made an, an official the two countries signed a new 10-year military assistance deal on this was in back this was back in uh, I believe 2007 but it's a 10-year deal 
Okay, this is what the United States did. They they represent a single large pledge of its kind. America gave Israel the largest military aid of its kind. They gave them thirty eight billion over the course of decades to increase an uh, increase of roughly twenty seven percent on money pledged in the last agreement, which was signed in 2007. So in 2007, they had an agreement, but they've given Israel even more money in, in military aid at the tune of 38 billion. The diplomacy of military alliance between the two countries and the long standing, even prior to the week's Israel was, according to Con Congressional Research Services, the largest aid since the World War II, the United States foreign aid to a war since World War II, the United States has given Israel the largest aid, foreign aid, military aid at the tune of $38 billion. They go our reparations right there, too. That's money that comes from our tax dollars. Now, people say, people believe that the United States spends more than 20% of America's federal budget goes to foreign aid. That's false. Okay, I'm going to say this again. Some people believe that 20% of America's federal budget goes to foreign aid. That's, that's false. It's actually, the truth is, this is why they do have the money, because the amount is actually 1% of America's budget goes to foreign aid. The current projected spending for the fiscal year of 2017, for example, was at $4 trillion. Obama, when he was even in office, he had a plan for $41.9 billion in foreign aid. Polls show that America typically believes that the United States spend between 25% to 27% in foreign aid. So what I'm basically saying is, is that they're only giving, they're, 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 United States is giving out a lot of foreign aid to other countries in the numbers of billions of dollars. But it's still like only 1% of the budget. So that's another argument for the fact that they can afford to pay black people reparations when they can give our tax dollars to Israel to help their military. Doesn't make any sense to me. $38 billion. That's our money. Now, Afghanistan, the Afghanistan, the war that's going to Afghanistan. Check this out. Afghanistan slated to be the biggest recipient or the biggest benefactor of the United States foreign aid this year. True. The plan amounts to American aid. Afghanistan in 2017. This is just 2017 numbers I'm using here, folks. Afghanistan received 4.7 billion, according to the to the foreign assistance government, the website foreign assistant gov. Check it out. Foreign assistance gov. Foreign assistant gov. According to them, the United States gave Afghanistan 4.7 billion. A tool now, a tool for tracking United States foreign assistance spending, finding to this Asian national na nation is intended to support the agriculture sectors by creating jobs, building national education systems, and assisting in reproductive health and establish. So basically, when the United States gave this foreign aid to Afghanistan in a tune of $4.7 billion. That's our goddamn reparations. That went to what? Schools that can help our damn schools. That went to reproductive health, health issues that can help our health issues. That went to education assistance and all these different things, okay? Jobs and all that kind of stuff. They're giving other people in other countries our tax dollars, but don't want to give us the the American descendants of slaves, people who ancestors came over here as slaves or were brought over here as slaves and worked this land in shackled slavery for free, which built American society. American society was built off the, tr off the slave trade. When you look at cities like New York, 
all these port cities, New York, Boston, they were built off of slavery. You even got companies, corporations that exist today that made their money off of slavery. Who you think? When the slaves came over here, they had to have people build clothes. You had people that were involved in building ships. All of this, it was a, it was a money-making economic boom that helped create America to this very day. Okay, when they gave this money to Afghanistan, the 4.7 billion, it helped their infrastructures, such as, like I said, schools, hospitals, according to information published by the United States Agency for International Development, or the USAID, in 2014, Afghanistan received, they received some more money. They received $7.3 in foreign assistance from the United States. There go our reparations checks right there, folks. Don't mess with me. We get on these panels. We get to running our mouth and talking about uh, what black people ain't going to get or what black people going to spend money or the United States ain't got no money to give us. That's that's vovine estimate. It's BS. They got plenty of money. They gave Afghanistan some money back in this is back in 2017. They hit them down with 4.7 billion towards their infrastructure, schools, and health. Then they turned around um, back back even before 2014. They gave them 7.3 billion in foreign assistance. From the United States. And I don't and don't give me this crap about, well, the money got missing, the money didn't get used for the people. I don't care. The fact of the matter is, the United States gave them money. Not to mention the money that the United States gave Iran when Obama was in office and they gave them a cash payment of money that they took from Iran. The United States has money to give. Anyone who believes that they can't that the country cannot afford it, they don't understand the economics and the economic power of this country and what they have done in giving money to other countries around the world. Now, Israel, I'm going to say this again. Israel comes in second among the United States aid recipients, okay, with a planned distribution of $3.1 billion in 2017, okay? I'm going to tell the truth. Tell the truth. God tell the truth. This is you're listening to the Information Man Show slash Information Man Podcast. Information is power. Okay, it is. Hear me out what I'm saying to you now. So $3.1 billion in 2017, according to the United States government statistics, Jordan is third in getting $1 billion. Jordan. You got Israel, you got Jordan. These are countries who received money, our tax dollars, that we as black people pay into. But yet they tell me and you, they can't figure out a payment, that it would be too difficult to give us a payment. BS. You've got people talking about, well, how are you going to determine who's who's a descendant of, of slaves? Wait a minute now. you got all these DNA tests that people take. you got all that DNA. What's that? you got Ancestry.com. And people get these, take these DNA tests. They put a little swab in their mouth and they're like, oh, I'm such and such, right? Now, even if you don't want to give this money, if we, even if we can't figure out who's a descendant to the slaves from the 1600s, we can surely identify black people who went, to a, who went through a hell of a lot when it came to Jim Crow, uh, black code laws, We've got black folks who had their land taken from them that were stolen, not to mention black inventors who had their patents stolen from them and their inventions. Oh, man, you got to understand your history, black people. To understand, Okay, they're giving reparations to other countries and other people. Once again, America is not even paying 20% of foreign aid. They're paying 1%, but that 1% is still money that they could be giving us. Now, experts say that cutting the foreign budget, which currently amounts to $50.1 would do very little to reduce the deficits. 
Now, you know, America's got a deficit. Of course, yes, we owe China money, but we still do business in the world, right? We got this deficit, but check this out. Yeah, we got a deficit, but it still does not stop the United States of America from giving out this foreign aid to other countries that they do business with, okay? In 2016, the United States put out about $55.2 billion, okay? $552 billion, let me just say that correct, $552 billion, $50.1 billion they were, they were putting out as it relates to, uh, uh, let me see, experts say that the cutting of the amount to $50.1 billion, right? So prior to 2016, the United States was at $50.1 billion in foreign aid in total. In 2016, which wasn't that long ago, we're in 2019, so that was about, what, two years ago, somewhere in there, or three years ago, uh, it was at 55.2, 55, 55, um, $552 billion. I want to say that correct, okay? $552 billion. So the United States has the money. Aid to Israel, once again. Now, for those of you who are Donald Trump lovers, Donald Trump is going to continue this type of aid to Israel, okay? It's in his proposal of his budget, okay? The United States signed a 10-year defense deal with Israel that promises to provide the Middle East and nation, nations a record of $38 billion in security and aid. I had to say that because we got to tell the truth. Tell the truth. That's right. Now, let me give you some more explosive information here, too. Remember uh, Obama? Um, Obama gave uh, tribes, uh, Native American tribes received $492 million historical move by Obama's administration. Okay, there were about 17 tribes. So in the United States government, will pay $492 million to 17 American tribes. Indian tribes to settle long-standing disputes over mismanagement of natural resources and other tribe assets. The Interior Justice Department announced that the settlement and joint press release that came as the tribe leaders from across the country attended President Barack Obama's eighth and and final White House tribute national conference in the release interior Secu uh, Sec secretary Sally pointed to the president's continual commitment to reconciliation. Now, where is the reconciliation for black people? So even Obama was able to give native Americans some money. Let me uh, read off something else that I said that I had stated on the O'Shea Duke Jackson's program. And I said this on O'Shea's on the Sunday Rumble. And I, once again, I want to thank everybody for listening. You're listening to the Information Man Show slash podcast. You're listening. I hope that you're getting uh, what I'm saying. I will put information in the description of the video so that you have in the in the podcast so that you can dig up the information that I'm citing um, right here. Historical reparation payments. Let me go by year. Okay. Now, the United States in 1986, they gave 32 million to a Native American tribe in Michigan. In 1985, the United States gave 31 million to a, uh, to a Native American tribe in Wisconsin, the Seminoles. Okay. Now, in 19 in 1985, the United States gave 12.3 million to Seminoles Native Americans in Florida. In 1985, the United States gave $105 million to a Native American tribe in South Dakota. In 1980, 
the United States government gave $81 million to a Native American tribe in Oregon, state of Oregon. And in 1971, the United States government gave $1 billion to 44 million acres of land that was taken away as a settlement to Native Americans in Alaska. Now, since 1865 and to the present day, the United States government has given ascendants of slaves or slavery and Jim Crow victims or its ascendants which would be African American black descendants have received. Are you ready for it? Here comes the bell. Black people have received a total of zero, nothing, zilch, nothing, zilch, nothing, zero. We have received nothing, nada, nothing. Thank you, ma'am, nothing. But other groups are getting money. Other people that live in other countries are getting money. That is our tax dollars. And black people have not received nada. I want to thank everyone for listening to this program. I had to put this together for you all. I hope you get where I'm coming from. This is the information man. I had to be honest. Tell it like it is. Tell the truth. And remember all of you to subscribe to my channel, please. You are listening to information man. Please make sure to subscribe to his channel. And get over there to the podcast channel. The information man speaks podcast description of it is in my video here and subscribe to the program these are the plat grant pro, uh, platforms that i'm on the information man podcast can be heard on nine major platforms on the second youtube channel as well information man speaks podcast spotify anchor apple podcast google podcast Podbean, CastBox, SoundCloud, and finally, Spreaker. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for listening to the, to the program. And um, I hope everybody is well wherever you are in the world. Please share this video, share this podcast, get the word out. Uh, once again, we get on platforms, we talk about it emotionally, but I'm the one bringing, to, bringing you the numbers and letting you know why the United States of America could do it. They don't have the will. They don't have the love for us. Black people, we have no friends. They don't care about us, and they don't have the will to give us that which we, sh we deserve because they covet other groups of people as more important than we are. Even though we've fought in every war that this country's ever had, our ancestors have. And we have contributed to building this country off our ancestors' back. It's been built. And yet we are overlooked in the north. And that congressional hearing that you heard in the, that they just had with that fool, um, you know the fool I'm talking about, the fool that I got on the uh, cover of this <laughs> video as the thumbnail, that fool, uh, uh, what's his name, Coleman he, uh, Hodge or Huge, whatever his name, Coleman, um, getting up there saying that you're making me a victim and we didn't ask to be a victim. They bring these type of buffoons to disrupt that which is truth. As Malcolm X said, they always find uh, a black person to try to discredit what has been said when you speak truth. They did not get into the raw numbers. This information that I just laid out is what they should have been presenting at that damn congressional hearing in conjunction with saying we want checks cut. And when you give us a check, that gives us the power that we need to do what? Educate ourselves, improve our social economic status, better housing, job opportunity, and all of that. And it also puts us in the power position, as Jason Black says, to demand those other issues that we want. When you talk to, when you talk about education, okay, on top of that, gives us the power to come to the table with power. 
because power respects nothing but power and power conceives nothing without a goddamn demand. I want to thank you, everybody. This is the Information Man. Take care wherever you are. Yes, thank you. Yeah, information man. Peace.